Listen to this, man. God gave me this. I love this. I want you to, this was my, this was my, I hope we got New King James, do we? Praise God for that. I don't even read New King James, but I was reading this and it, it blessed me and I was looking at it. And when I looked at it, I really started getting this pulled in. Um, I really feel, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the, I'm going to follow up what I was saying um, about the Lord, about what we were talking about the other night, because I really felt that was good. But I was looking at this in the New King James, and it was, um, it was in Isaiah, and it, God gave me this, dropped it into my spirit for you guys about why you're here. And when I got it, I was like, okay. And it kind of like, kind of didn't sidetrack me, but it did make me pause because I didn't want to miss, um, I didn't want to miss the moment for what God has for you. Um, because God, God reveals things to you sometimes that are, that are miraculous. And when he, when he reveals to you the miraculous, I think it's really important that we pull it, we pull it in and understand how valuable it is. And sometimes I think if you're not careful, what we kind of do is we, we, don't really, we don't really grasp it. Does that make sense? We miss it, but we go too fast because we're in a hurry. And we go right by it. So I was looking at this, and I said, God, what you, what you, what's, what's the story here? And I really felt he wants to prepare the way for you to understand this for your life. And I'm just going to read it to you because um, it reads better if I just read it like this. He said, son of man, look with your eyes and your ears and hear with your ears and fix your mind on everything I show you. Okay? For you were brought here so I might show them to you. So he said, son of man. Look with your eyes and hear with your ears and fix your mind on everything I showed you for you were brought here so I might show you them. Declare to the house of Israel everything you see. And I thought that I said, God brought you here to show you something. I don't know what you're going to hear, but whatever you need to hear these last couple of days, just take it and run with it. God is teaching us something. He's teaching us kingdom secrets in this season. On the surface, they look simple. But they generate unusual results when God opens your eyes through his word and the kingdom is revealed to you the secrets that have been hidden. Through the word of God, kingdom secrets are revealed. Don't make the mistake of making little of those things in this season you're in. We're too quick to move by these things. And this is what God told me. He said, because the miraculous is hidden in the ridiculous. I said, man, what, what do you mean? He said, because it's the little things that you know to do that you overlook and you don't do anymore because you think that is so little. What is it going to do with my problems that are so big? But you got to remember that God has hidden them kingdom secrets in the ridiculous to reveal the miraculous because none of it makes sense. Give me a cake and I'll produce a miracle. That's ridiculous. I was looking at John you know, chapter five, and I'm not going to do it because I don't want to take a lot of time tonight. I'm, I'm going to really, I want to get into this thing because I want to give you the back end of the thing. But I started thinking about the moving of the water. I'm in the movement. If you said one word, what's one word in your life right now? Movement. Don't wait, move. Get the movement going. Get moving. Get going. Let's get going. You got you to take a step towards your destiny. Take a step towards your plan. No one has ever seen tomorrow. Tomorrow is a mystery. No one's seen tomorrow. Tomorrow is not, tomorrow doesn't even exist. People talk about this stuff tomorrow. Show me tomorrow. You ever see tomorrow? No. It showed up, it's today. It's never showed up a day in your life. Everybody's waiting for tomorrow, waiting for this, waiting for that, waiting for this to happen. Wait. No, you got to have movement. Move towards God. Move towards the things of God. Take steps towards your destiny. Problem with people is they lose vision. 
They lose vision because it doesn't look like it's happening. I'm going to talk to you. Leave your coat on. I'm going back to it because I'm going to give you the four elements of keeping your coat on. But the problem was you stopped believing in the dream because people stopped staying connected to it. And God told me something. The authenticity of your dream was never derived from the people that were in it following it. You understand that? The authenticity of your dream was never, never, never because of the people that were in it following you. It didn't become value. It wasn't, it wasn't authenticated because people followed you. It was in you from the beginning. When they disconnected, you devalued the dream. Who really cares if they, they don't, they don't. Why would you now take the authenticity of the dream away because people stop following it? They just revealed that they are what? Unauthentic and not allowed to be in your life anymore. Amen. I'm going to say it real good. You're getting it. You're, I'm trying to get your head to pull in. Okay? Here's what I'm saying. I got a dream. I start living out my dream. I'm living out my dream. Joseph had a dream. Everybody's got a dream. You got a dream. I don't care if you're a businessman. I don't care what you do. You got a dream. You're a stay-at-home mom. You got a dream. There's a dream in you for your kids. There's a dream in you for your family. But all of a sudden, people stop following the dream. And now all of a sudden, because they stop following the dream, you don't think what? That the value of the dream is as big as you thought it was. Because if it was so good, why aren't people following me? Just because people disconnected from your dream doesn't mean that the value of the dream is not where God placed it. It just means the value of the people around you is not where it should be. They don't need to be there. You see what I'm saying? You got this dream, you start running, you think, well, people should be following me. They leave. No, I I got an authentic dream that came from heaven. They just produced what? That they ain't supposed to be with me in the future. You can't get mad about the future people that can't stay with you. This stuff all preaches right, but you got to realize that when you start going after the things that God has for you, not everybody can go with you. You can't take everybody with you. Not everybody knows where you're going, and they don't want to fight the pain. You got to fight to get there, so they disconnect. Now, all of a sudden, you feel like, well, maybe it's not that big a deal. It's a big deal. But you got to realize some people can't go with you because they don't have the capacity to go with you all the way. And you're over there ready to take your coat off. Because other people cannot stay, and now you're like, well, maybe it's not me. It is you. Come on. You can't stop this thing. I'm telling you, listen to me. I'm going to show you. But this is what happens. God has given us these things, and sometimes we miss it, right? That's what I was thinking about. Movement has to be recognized. I was thinking about that in John chapter 5. You're in the water, kept moving. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he said, once I try to get to the pool, I can't get to the pool because somebody gets in the pool before me. And he goes like this. He says, what can you do? And he said, hey, what do you want? He said, I want to. But every time it starts getting stirred up, every time it starts getting movement, every time my solution starts moving, I got no man to put me in the pool. Jesus said to him, he said, what? He said, man, he said, you ain't got to get no man to get you. Sometimes we limit what we could do because we don't think the people around us can help us get to where we need to get to. Stop looking at the hand of man. Stop looking for help from people. Stop looking at all this other stuff and understand that if God's got it ready for you to get there, you can definitely get there. Stop looking for the things that ain't working and understand this, that if God starts stirring the water, he will get you to the miracle. Amen. Get some movement and get going. Don't look at what you don't have. That's the problem with people. I don't have the ability. God never called anybody with the ability to do it. He called the people that would be willing to stay in faith and walk it out. If you had the ability to do it, you wouldn't have needed him. So guess why he calls you in your inability? Because in your inability, you're the only one who goes home at night and cries knowing you can't do it. Nobody else knows it, but praise be to God, he'll give you the strength to do it. That's the problem. But I'm telling you, man, you get, you get discouraged because people in your life that should have helped you carry this thing to the end, quit. Yes, sir. And then you start thinking, well, what, you, you start almost questioning the level of the call. Wow. And now you're like, well, if I'm really called or I really got this plan, I don't care business people, everybody, we're going to another level. Right. And people walk out of the vision mm-hmm. and then you question yourself, is the vision really genuine? And the people that walk out make you question where God's trying to take you. 
And then you asking yourself, well, is it really there? When all the while, you should have been asking, why ain't they there? You got the wrong people on your bus, man. You trying to take the wrong people with you to a destination God only told you to go to. And then you getting discouraged because people don't want to go with you. You think about it, I'm telling the truth. And then you getting discouraged because everybody should have had a parade for getting to the destination and you find out you're all by yourself on your bus. And then you're trying to go get a bunch of people that walked out to get back on the bus. You're trying to get a whole bunch of people that walked out the bus to get back on the bus. Say, oh, it's good in the bus. It's comfortable in the bus. It's going to be nice in the bus. It's an air-conditioned bus. You're going to love the bus. Get on the bus. Let's go. They're like, well, I don't know if I want to go. And you're over there on the sideline of your destiny trying to get a bunch of people to get on a bus that God told you to get off the bus. And and I'm telling you, listen to me, the more you're pushing and the more you're going forward, you're going to start realizing some of the people that are close to you don't need to be close to you. Some of the people that are hanging on you don't need to hang on you no more. Some of the people that have been feeding on you don't need to feed on you no more. It's time for you to start running your race. And while you're running, if they fall behind, don't wait up. Just keep booking. Be fast like Manny. Run 4-4. Four, four. And if they don't keep up, say, bro, I'm still, I ain't stopping to get you. Well, you're mean, Pastor Chris. No, here's the problem. You don't want to go where I'm going. You're just trying to hinder me from getting there. Somebody better give me an amen better than that. You know I'm telling the truth. You, you staying up there crying, and they up there acting a fool talking about you. It's true. And then you're over there, well, why don't they see how, how anointed I am? Why don't they see the vision? Man, I don't care. You corporate America, oh, I'm going to be the best employee you ever had in your life. Then why can't you show up to work on time? Come on, man. Why can't you do what you're told? Why can't you do it? Well, you know, and then you start asking yourself, oh, and you start going out. Why can't people? No. You got to keep the right people around you. Because why? And them little simple things. He's hidden. The miraculous and the ridiculous. Little things. What's this going to do? Associating right. I'm telling you, there's some of you, that's why you got this heaviness. Got this heaviness because, well, people stop believing in the dream. Well, who said that they were the one to authenticate your dream? Amen. That thing came from heaven. People in your own house don't know where you're going. Your family looks at you like you're crazy. I'm going to give you four days. I ain't keeping you all night. I told you this. But I'm just telling you, I, I feel the room. See, I don't, I don't, they know I don't get notes. I got, a, I got the word in me. So, but, but I feel the room. I feel your heaviness. Because you're, some of you guys have been carrying stuff you need to carry no more. You're carrying people God never told you to carry. You understand this? Now, some of this will hit home for some of you a little bit different. What do you mean? Well, I, I was doing what I was called to do. See, you, you got to realize this. Number one, first and foremost, when I started talking Wednesday night about you better put your coat on Joseph. See, I'm just wearing the coat my father gave me. That's what you got to realize. I didn't want this coat. You didn't want your coat. Your daddy gave you that coat. Stop comparing yourself to other people. It's not your coat. Don't put your coat on. Don't critique somebody else's coat. This is the problem, right? Well, I'm not that important. Yeah, you are. You're important. Put your coat on. You know, I said, I got this business thing we do, so with the business guys. All these business guys felt bad when they were went, went to ministry because, you know, it was like, hey, all the preachers run to the front of the building, all the, pre, all the evangelists, all the missionaries. If you're called to missions, right? They all ran to the building. I had a one guy, he said, I sat in the back. He said, all I wanted to do was make money. I felt bad. He was a kid. He said, I felt like I was supposed to be a businessman. Leave your coat on. Leave your coat on, man. You don't need to be no preacher. Be the best businessman the world's ever seen. Don't be the best business lady the world's ever seen. Why? That's your coat. I didn't want my coat. But when you get it, you got to put it on and you got to believe in it. 
You got to believe in what you're doing. You got to believe in you when no one else believes in you. You got to believe in you when everybody leaves you. You got to believe in you when no one's there. You got to believe in you when you're all by yourself. You got to believe in you when everybody walks out of your life. You got to believe there when the people that told you they were going to love you left. You got I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you got to believe in you when nothing looks like it's working. You got to believe in you. Pastor Chris, you said you got to believe in you. You got to believe in you. Because I'm going to tell you what, other people are going to stop believing in you. And the moment they stop believing in you, you're going to stop maybe believing in yourself. You got to believe in you before they show up. I start talking. I'm telling you, you got to know that, hey, look, you ain't getting me to my destiny. I'm getting you to your destiny. Come on, somebody. You got to know that in the company. You got to know that in life. You got to know that. And if I want my, if I want your destiny more than you want it, I'm the one going to go home with the problem. So you better wake up and get running. Amen. Come on. Right. See this? Amen. You got to shift this thing quick. You got to wear, you got to leave on. Joseph had that coat. He put that coat on. Everybody hated him for it. Mm-hmm. That's, right. That's where we started. They, they, you thought they were going to run a parade for you. They got mad at you. They got envious of you. They got jealous. You started doing something, and instead of people clapping for you, they got jealous about you. They started critiquing you and criticizing you. They couldn't even speak peaceably about you. People in your own house that were supposed to be excited about what you're doing, now they're mad about what you're doing. They ain't, they ain't doing cartwheels because you showed up. They're cursing you because you showed up. Ain't easy putting this thing on. Your own family's talking about you. Come on. Because why? Just because I put my coat. I'm just wearing the coat my daddy gave me. Come on. That's all you're doing. Did you want that coat? No. But I got it. Why you go take your coat out the closet? Why'd you take it off? Why well, I think it was special. It's special. It's your coat. See, when he put that coat on him, man, he put that anointing on him. He preaches real good. You don't want to preach after him. Every time we go somewhere, I was like, let me please go first. Please. Yeah, I mean, we went to this place one time. He could preach, man. He bad, man. And he got up. He, he started talking about, i never forget your sermon, man. I tried to steal it. It didn't work. It didn't go. He got up there. He preached about Acts, about the shipwreck. I never forgot that. You remember that sermon? He preached about Acts and starts preaching the text, gets up, to reads the text about a shipwreck. I said, how in the heavens is this guy going to preach about a shipwreck? He said, you know, ship blew up. It's in Acts, like 26 or something like that, right? Somewhere around and he looked up after he read like five scriptures. He said, tonight I want to talk to you about making it on broken pieces. I said, I'm going home. <laughs> Jesus, good. Make it on broken pieces. I said, I'm a broken preacher. Can I go after him? No, I want to go before. Stop putting me after him. I don't want to go be- after. I want to go before. Preacher paying off the door. That's his coat, though. He got to put it on. Why, you, why do you not value your coat? Why are you critiquing your coat? Why are you criticizing your coat? Put it on, man. Be the you God called you to be, man. You ain't got to be nobody else. Put on you. Be the best you there is. My coat might not be like your coat, but guess what? You need it. That's the problem. You're not comfortable in your own skin. You want to be somebody else. Everybody else wants to be somebody else. Oh, I wish I could be like that. And Instagram's a lie, so wake up already, all you. (laughs) People got like, oh, Instagram. I want to have the Instagram family. Yeah, okay. No, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody's life's all rosy. Wake up. I know a lot of these people. You know, but I see them. I'm like, you. I know the backstory. You don't know it. So you don't. Don't sit there and go, oh, look, they got the perfect world. They're like the Waltons. I don't even know if that's a show anymore. But no, there ain't no Waltons out there. These people are crazy. Just because your life don't look right. Well, I love somebody that left me. Well, they didn't know the value of who you were. Come on. I stopped doing this, but somebody said, who cares? Big deal. I, I tried a business and failed. Baby, you do that day. Come on, start another one. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Stop leaving one life hit. Stop you from future success. Don't let a setback stop you from a comeback. Come on, somebody. When you get a setback, do what? Take a step back, but you better get ready to wheel up a comeback and let's go. Don't stop. Get going. Let's go. You can't say, oh, well, big deal. You lost 20 grand, 60 grand. Who cares? Big deal. Money. It comes back. Cut it out. Stop, stop this non-dreaming business. I'm telling you, man, it's important. See, the Holy Ghost is here. He's just hovering. We'll let him, we'll let him do his thing. But I got to encourage you. But you know, I thought life was going to be different than this. Everybody did. 
I thought this should have happened by now. You know, if it goes somewhere, I do it. I'm preaching. You know, you look at your church. Your church is great. I go out to the place. I'm like, you got six of these things. Got thousands of people. What in the world's going on? Sometimes I got to ask myself. I'm like, man, God, why don't you give me one of those? Those are cool. He got six. <laughs> he don't need all them. <laughs> I told the one guy, I said, you know, I'm kind of envious of you right now, okay? You can just get over it. I'll take one of them buildings. It's not my coat. Yeah, amen. Think about it, though. You look at somebody's business, that ain't, that ain't your coat. Yeah. All you're responsible for was what God gave you. Yeah. Leave your coat on. Yeah. Don't take it off. You say, Pastor Chris, you're going to say that a thousand times? A hundred thousand times. Because you know why? Every day you get up, something's speaking to you inside your head. What giant do you got to slay inside your mind? That keeps talking to you every day about what you're not. What you cannot do, what you cannot become, who you cannot be. Because like I'm, I, know the de- I know God, I know the devil. I'm not, I'm not excited about knowing the devil, but I know it works. Every day you get up, you look in the mirror, he's telling you who you're not, what you cannot become, what you cannot do. What, what do you mean? You listen to that too long, next thing you know, you start, you'll take your coat off. Put it in the closet and stop being what God called you to be. But guess what? If that's what God gave you, be the best you can, man. Prepare like you got 20,000. Work like you got a mega company. Prepare, get there, why? Because I got to put my coat on. I got to go be what God called me to be. I'm going to be a financier of the kingdom of heaven. Go for it. I'm going to be the best preacher in America. So you got three people in your church, and you preaching better than anybody on earth. Why? Because you got to be faithful with the little, and God will give you much. Yes. Yes. Say, I don't, I don't, these people, you know, yeah, he's going to bring you a couple crazy ones. <laughs> yeah. He'll do it all the time. He's going to do it. And he's going to see, can you handle that too? Because yes, people are going to walk out of your life. Yes, see, the, the leadership, this is the key. Leadership is not any other ability but the amount of pain you can handle. So if you're going to be a great leader, it doesn't come down to all that other stuff. That's Sam Chan said that in that book. He said, leadership is all about pain. So you want to, you want to start something? You better embrace pain. Yes, sir. Anything is pain. Your threshold of pain is the determining factor of your level of leadership. Yeah. That's, right. That's what it is. So you say, well, I want to lead. Well, you better get ready for pain. Yeah. And how much pain you could take Shows me how good a leader you can be. And Jesus was the best leader you've ever seen on the face of earth because he took the most pain everybody has ever seen him. See it? Okay, let me give you these four things and I'll pray for you and let you go, all right? You need to get encouraged sometimes. That's why you came here. I didn't come here to be cute, preach sermons. Come Sunday. Come Sunday, I'll preach a cute sermon. You know what I'm saying? I got to talk to you into this. You're discouraged, man. You're discouraged. Well, I'm just a housewife. Big, what do you mean you're just a housewife? You're not a housewife. That's a great thing. Put your coat on. Praying tongues in that house, man. Tell those kids. Lay hands on those jokers when they're sleeping. You got to do it when they're sleeping because as they get older, they fight you. <laughs> they don't know what I do when they're sleeping. I'm going to rub oil on them. I got in here one day and I got a prayer cloth and the thing got, <laughs> got on me and I fell out. It was really wild. I had a really good experience. Luke was like, Daddy, you cried like a little girl in church today. It's like, Jesus. Can't get a break from this kid, you know? So you cried like a little girl. I turned a corner and you fit, cry, fell on the ground. I felt like somewhere over here started crying. I was crying. I was really crying. And he's like, two, a day later, he's like, you cried like a little girl. I was like, whatever. So you know what his mom did? He knows already. I took the prayer cloth. I shoved it under his bed. <laughs> he found it. My mom did want to me too. You got what to? He found it. He goes, what's this? Come out with it. I think that's the towel I was crying in. <laughs> I put it on you. Maybe it'll rub in. You know what I mean? You do it, yeah, right? I anoint that little joker when he's sleeping. But like, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna get an eyedropper and drop like holy water in his mouth. <laughs> put holy water in all their mouth. Yeah, this is getting good. I can put it, if I put that together, somebody will buy it, right? You know that? Holy drops. <laughs> People will be buying it, for, put drops in their mouth. <laughs> right, one day? When they do that, they be doing it, right? Grease them all up. <laughs> Put it all over them. Yeah, there ain't no telling what's happening in that house. Lord of God. You got to use what? Well, it seems like it's ridiculous. What's laying hands going to do? That's ridiculous. No, that's miraculous. 
problem with the church is we're leaving all the miraculous because it looks ridiculous. And we're listening to this goofy world out there tells you, oh, you don't got to pray in tongues. Oh, you don't got to do this. Oh, you don't got to do that. Oh, shut up. They don't know. No. You're listening to CNN to tell you how to be spiritual. Those morons don't even know how to tell the news, let alone they're going to tell you how to do things in the spirit of God. Are you kidding me? Oh, you pray in tongues? Yeah, why? You don't? You should pray in tongues. You got to ask. I don't know. I'm too sad. You're too all right. You're something all right. You're messed up. No, don't leave what you know works just because you worked it for a season and it doesn't look like nothing changed. It's going to change. It's got to change. It's the kingdom of heaven. It's got to work. And if Jesus told you to do it, it's good for you. Do it. Well, we got to have a sermon, but we can't have the Holy Ghost on Sunday morning. You better put this Holy Ghost on Sunday morning to make minute they come in the door to the minute they leave. Why? Because these people ain't going to make it out there without the Holy Ghost and you're over there trying to hide it. I can't tell my friends I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Stop compromising and get rid of your ding dong friends and go get some people that pray in the Holy Ghost. You ain't got to tell everybody and get everybody mad, but my God in heaven, why are you hiding God? Come on. It's time. So here's my four points. Ready? How do I keep my coat on? I got to keep my coat on. That's pretty cool inside there. I like that. Keep your coat on. Keep your coat on. How do I keep my coat If you weren't here Wednesday, you got to go back. I told you, Joseph got a coat. You know what that coat was? The anointing. Did you know what that coat was? That was his anointing. That was his favor. You know you got a coat? It's the anointing on your life. God took your... Per- I went to Raymond. I don't remember one of these classes. I went for a year. I don't know what the guy said. He wasn't really that great. It was boring. But he said this. Never forgot it. He said, I had to pray this year. It was so dry. I took this one. Oh, my God. I took, what was that one? Called? Old Testament. Old Testament survey. Boring. I checked out. I was like, forget this class. I'm going to fail. I didn't fail. It was easy. It was a break. I did good, but I didn't pay attention. There's hope for all your children. I'm telling you, there is. Ask my mother, she'll tell you. She passed high school for me. But she helped me, man. She really did. There's a lot of hope for a lot of you people in here. If God can use me, trust me, he can use you. God will take the foolish things of the world and confound the wise. Come on. So, so he said this. I never forgot this. Write this down. You're going to love this. He said, God will take the, his anointing, put it on your personality, and make you the only you in the world. Changed my life. Because I didn't feel like I was qualified for certain things. He said, God will take his anointing, put it on your personality. There's only one of you in the world. And that's the moment you become separated from everybody else because your uniqueness just was discovered. So don't try to be like nobody else because you're not you. And that's what they try to do all your life, try to make you be like everybody else. But you ain't like everybody else. And the moment you start to try to be like everybody else, you just lost, your, lost all your authenticity yeah, sure and you became miserable. Amen. So be you. Yeah. See it? Yep. Yep. Just be you, bro. Yep. So God takes his anointing, does what? Puts it on my personality, makes me unique. And what happens? The moment you step in it, everybody around you tries to change you to go be like somebody else. Because yes. right. instead of embracing you, they try to make you conform. Yes. And if you're not careful, you'll take your coat off because of the critics. Yeah. Come on. Not because of the pain of wearing it, mm. but the critics. Well, maybe I'm not all that. And then you know what you start doing? You start losing vision. Yeah. And then you know what you start doing? You start what? Compromising the call. Yeah. And once you start losing all those things, life starts getting blurry. Yeah. Yeah. Write these down. Number one, you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith to keep your coat on. Write it down. You got to fight the good fight of faith. You got to fight the good fight of faith. Don't you ever stop believing in you. Everybody walks out, I don't care. No one determines the value of how much you're worth That's right. by what they can only see about you. Because all they see is through the lens they're living in. They don't know the capacity of your ability. No one does. But God. See it? Don't let them tell you who you are. 
See what I'm saying? And here's what happens. When you stop believing in you, first thing you stop doing, you stop preparing like the you you thought you were supposed to be. You stop. You don't grind as hard. You don't grind in the spirit as hard because you think, oh, you know what? Well, maybe I'm wrong. So what do you do? You let off the what? Spirituality thinking like, well, maybe it's not that big a deal. It is. Keep the vision. Fight the fight of faith. People don't even know what faith is. I talked to you about faith before. Write these down. These are going to help you. Look at this scripture. Go to Psalms. Look at this. Psalms 6 and 5. I think I got into passion. How can I be any good to you, dead? It's a good scripture to start with. Four points we're going to go. I'm going to pray for you. Ready? How can I be any good to you, dead? For the graveyard sing no song. In the darkness of death, who remembers you? How could I bring you praise if I'm buried in a tomb? I'm exhausted. I'm worn out with weeping. I endure weary, sleepless nights filled with moaning, soaking my pillow with tears. My eyes of faith won't focus anymore, for sorrow fills my heart. There are so many enemies who come against me. My eyes of faith, what? Won't focus anymore. Your vision gets blurry when your faith gets tested. Write it down. Vision gets blurry every time your faith gets tested. Once your faith gets tested, you'll start compromising the vision. You'll start critiquing. Well, maybe it isn't. Maybe it's not supposed to be. Maybe it isn't there. Maybe I'm supposed to be here. Then everybody's like, maybe it's supposed to be somewhere else. Maybe Nah, stop all that nonsense. God told you where to go. God told you what to do. God told you where to be. God told you what's up. Stop compromising it just because other people got it all blurry. Forget about all that nest. Do what God called you to do. You get this stuff? Don't worry about it. Don't, you got to fight the fight of faith. If you don't fight the fight of faith, you're going to what? You're going to get messed up because you're going to hold back what you need. Vision gets blurry the moment you get this. You got to understand this. God will never let you slip back to a place of faithlessness if you keep him in the forefront of your mind. Okay? Look at it. It says here, 2 Timothy 1.6. Just write these down. You got to believe in your gift, man. You got to believe in your call. You got to train like a champion when no one else sees it. You understand that? You got to put it in. I'm telling you, man, you got to put the grind in and just to be a Christian. You got to train like a champion when no one else believes in you. Well, there ain't nobody else believing in me. Who cares? You believe in you. Train like a champ. Don't stop doing what you know to do because other people ain't doing it. Keep running your race. That's how you do it. Run this thing. Don't you stop. Come on. Well, you know, nobody showed up. Big deal. Go. Well, you know, people stop coming. Who cares? Go. Do it. I'm telling you, man, I know. This is like, like oh, I got, no, I'm talking to you. Well, why? Why? Because three weeks from now, you're going to wake up, and you're going to feel like something you don't need to feel, and you got to have faith to open your mouth. People are like, well, I got faith. You got enough faith to open your mouth? When's the last time you started confessing things? When's the last time you were speaking this? When's the last time you looked at the storm and instead of the storm overwhelming you, overtaking you and setting you back, you stood and laughed at that thing and said, you better roll up your sleeves and pack a fight because I'm about ready to get knocked out. I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. You come in the ring with me, you ain't coming out alive. Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I said, Pastor Chris, you scared of the devil? I ain't scared of one devil. Not one devil has got me nervous. Why? Because I know the ability in Christ Jesus inside of you to over there. Well, where is it? In your mind, in your walk, in your your talk and what's coming against you. Life will knock the wind out of you if you're not careful. You got to be ready in faith to stand and fight the good fight of faith when you don't see. Why? Because it's invisible. It's not. The devil's real, man, but he's invisible. He's speaking to you. You got to talk back. Look what it says here. I'm writing you to encourage you to do what? You got it in passion? That'd be great. Wherefore, put thee in remembrance, thou stir up the gift of God, which is in the, by the putting on my hand. Look what it says in the passion. I'm writing to you to encourage you to fan the flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid my hands on you. It's in there, man. That fire is inside of you waiting to kindle. That light is in there waiting to burn. You get spiritually dull. We all get spiritually dull. You stay away from church too long, you get dull. But I could do it at the house. Man, all those grumpy, disgruntled people in their home meeting, leave them alone. He said it. I say whatever I want to say. Eight, eight people all mad about life get together and talk about what the church should be doing. I mean, sure, you better go to church, bro. Yeah, I'm tough. I'm rough, but I don't get it. This ain't this place ain't. You know what? I tell them here. I said this is a big boy church. Amen. 
Yeah, because I didn't know Country Club. You go to, I like the Country Club. We went the other day. We went to the Country Club yesterday. The other day, we played golf. Country Club's nice. Everybody's, oh, it's great. Oh, it's great. Yeah, Country Club's great. Me and him went to the even better one. That was even nicer. Beautiful. Yeah, everything's great. Church become a country club. Is it hot enough? Is it cool enough? Is it nice enough? You got a drink? You want it? Now they got a movie theater seats so you can have a Slurpee while you're in the place. I don't have a problem. <laughs> Eat popcorn while I'm here. I could care less. But let me tell you, I'm going to tell you the truth. Amen. You got to stay around somewhere where you get challenged, That's where your faith gets pulled, where the de devil gets on you. You try to come in the building and we smack them off. Why? You got to be strong. Come on. This is the day and age. You got to be strong in the things of God. Come on, man. I'm not picking on nobody, but you know what I mean. Well, I don't think it's that important. I do. Why? Because the minute you come in here, God said, I'll meet you in between the porch and the altar. Come on. He said, when you come in that altar, I'll meet you with my presence. I'll find you in the house of God. I sanctified it and set it apart. People say, well, you know, the church is just a church. No, the church is just not a church. We command this atmosphere to produce the miraculous. We command this atmosphere to set you free. We command this atmosphere to do so. And they say, Pastor Chris, people come there they don't feel why because this house is subject to the authority that we placed in it yes. you can't come in here weird <laughs> we got people that are weird they visit they never come back <laughs> ask yourself on the ride home just saying <laughs> no be serious they're like pastor Chris, they, you should not feel comfortable in god's house i don't say nothing about it I don't care how people do and what they do but you know what i'm saying there's an atmosphere in here. When you come in, God comes on you. I felt him. You know what I'm saying? He's talking to you. He's encouraging you. God loves you. So you got this? Keep your faith right. Everybody got your faith right? You see that part? Here's this, right? Check this out. Watch this. Two, if you're going to keep your coat on, you got to keep your mouth right. Here we go. I'm going to be quick. I got seven minutes. I only get one person who always says that. Take your time. Everybody else is like, hurry, hurry up. <laughs> you, got, you got to keep your mouth right to keep your coat on. Don't talk yourself out of this. Well, I just say what I want to say. You're not allowed to say what you want to say. And this is what happens. You get pressed and you get pushed. And then what do you do? You start talking crazy. Right? right. Tell the truth. You get weak, and now you let every goofy thing come out of your mouth. You have, like, emotional wackiness coming out of your mouth. We all do it. And you're mad, and you're frustrated, and you want to vent, and you just start spewing all this stuff out, and then it's all downhill from there because you know, like, I feel the Holy Ghost just hit me right there because you know right then and there, like, you having one of those days. You're like a 50-year-old having a temper tantrum. I get mad and blah, 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 and you just let it all out. I know, but here's the deal. You got to realize something. Some of this stuff, you need to go do it in the name of Jesus in private. Don't let people see you in public, and don't tell none of your friends. Go do this in your prayer chamber. I'm telling you, it's important. Look what he said here. I'm going to show you something. You, you're going to love this scripture. When I show it to you, you're going to get mad at me, but you're going to like it. Ephesians 4, 22. Kayla, let's just stay in the past unless I pull out. Put off concerning, oh, that might be King James. I'm sorry. Put that in. Put off concerning the former conversation because you got to realize something. You know what happened with Joseph? Oh, my God. When you see this at the end, I'm going to mess you up, right? Look at this. Put off the former conversation. Yeah, Ephesians 4, 22, King James. You're going to love this. Right? Yeah, we're going to go into King James. I messed you up. I said put it in that. I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. Okay. <laughs> you're doing a great job. Yeah, I went to King James because I like it. Put off the former conversation, the old man. Put on the new man. Yeah. Don't you? What do you do with the new? What do you say? Put your coat on. You talking like a human. You're not. Put on your spirituality. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Uh -huh. That's what you said. He put on the new man. He didn't say put on the old you. You ain't an old you. This goofy teacher, there is no old you. You just got an unrenewed mind. Go renew your mind. There ain't no, oh, that's my old nature. You ain't got no old nature. He annihilated your old nature once and for all, nailed it to a cross. No more there. You know what it is? Unrenewed mind. You got to challenge your mind to be renewed. Put on the new man. What's the new man? Put on the new man with the new conversation, which was corrupt the old man according to deceitful us. But look at the next verse. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renew your mind, man. Right. Who are you? You're not who you think you are. You ain't a human. You're a supernatural being. There ain't never been one like you before. The Bible tells you that. Look at verse 20. And that you put on a new man. Look at 24. There it is. Put on the what? Put on the new man. What do you mean put on? Put on like a coat. The new man. What's the new man do? He's created in righteousness and holiness. Look at the next verse. 
What, what about wherefore put away lying? Speak the truth. Get your mouth right. You got to get your mouth right. How are you talking? It's quiet in here. Well, yeah, if you ain't talking positive, you're talking what? Negative. Now you're setting an atmosphere of negativity. You're bound by your words. What does James say? He said the man that could bridle his tongue could bridle his whole body. We put a bit in a horse's mouth. We put a bridle in his ship. What is he trying to tell you? Where your mouth goes, your body goes. It's a law. Let me say it again. He who could tame his tongue can bridle his whole body. If you cannot tame your tongue, your body goes wherever your tongue goes. That's why he said wherever the rudder goes, guess where it goes. Wherever the horse goes, that's where it goes. I got news for you. Wherever your tongue goes, that's where your life goes. It's a law. What did I tell you? The miraculous is hidden in the ridiculous. Oh, I'm just going to say what I want to say. You better not. I'm just going to talk the way I want to talk. You better not. I'm going to just call it the way I see it. You better shut your mouth. I'm telling you now. Look, I ain't being rude. I'm just trying to tell you this. You can't afford to let stuff come out your mouth. Because why? Death and life is in the power of the tongue. They that love it will eat the fruit thereof. What is he saying? You're going to eat the fruit of your lips. That's what he's saying. How many want that fruit? If you want, next time, right, say, do you want that harvest? Walk around the house and be like that. You'll get in trouble. <laughs> you want to harvest on that? Come on, look at this. Look at Matthew 12, 33, passion. Come on. I know I'm pushing you a little bit, but this is why you come in here and get stretched. Look at this. this. You know, this is where Matthew 12, 33, and King James, I don't want that. Put it in passion. It says, either make the tree good or its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt or its fruit corrupt, because every tree is known by its fruit. That's what he's saying here. Same scripture. Reads a little better. Okay? You must determine if a tree is good or rotten. You can recognize good trees by their delicious fruit, but you can find rotten fruit. You understand the tree is rotten. The, true, the fruit defines the tree. Keep going. Watch this. But you are what? You who are known as Pharisees are rotten to the core. You've been poisoned by the nature of your venomous snake. How can your words be good and trustworthy if you're rotten within? For what has been stored up in your hearts will be what? Heard in the overflow of your words. The abundance of the heart, the mouth will. How to get in your heart? Got in your ear. Got in your eye. Right? How many things, some stuff comes out of you like, oh my God, where'd that come from? A thought. Because every feeling is connected to a thought. Every thought is connected to a feeling. Words have feelings. You, think, you ever think of something and get a feeling from it? Yeah. All the time. Yes, Look at the next verse. Watch this. When virtue is stored within the hearts of the good and upright people will produce good fruit. But when evil is hidden within, those who are evil will produce evil fruit. Keep going. You can be sure of this. When the day of judgment comes, everyone will be held accountable for every careless word he's spoken. Gets worse. For every word... Very words will be used as evidence against you. And your words will declare you either innocent or guilty. What? Your very words will be used against you as evidence. I'm going to leave now. How many innocent or guilty? Man, your words, your, your words are either producing your, what? producing your innocence or your guiltiness. Why is that? Where are you siding your mouth with you can't afford to talk any way you want. Got to keep your words right. You take your coat off, you don't talk right. Here, number three. What? Ready? You got to clarify. Don't write this down. This is a bonus. You got to clarify the authentic. You have to clarify your identification. If you do not identify right, you're going to be messed up in life. Because you're going to talk like a human when you're not. You got to stay close to the Holy Ghost to keep your coat on. You got to stay close, man. You can't afford to get away. Get back. Get close. Don't, 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 don't let those moments of time leave you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking to you tonight. This ain't about preaching. Amen. This is me about encouraging. I knew my assignment this week. Yes. You know what I mean? I know my assignment is. My assignment is to encourage you. Amen. You know what I mean? I come, we have a preaching thing later. Because we leave in the Holy Ghost, man. Yeah. You know, we don't even teach these kids, go stay in a room and pray in the spirit for 10, 15 minutes a day. Right. We don't even talk like that no more. We're leaving this stuff behind. I ain't leaving nothing behind. Because it's the only thing that works. You know what I'm saying? You got to teach these kids, man. Go pray in the spirit. To you. Go pray. You should be praying in the house in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, the kids know. I'm in there all the time. Like, Dad, what are you doing? 
You got to get in there. I'm telling you, listen, you got to stay close to the things of God. That's why I built that app. Five minutes a day, come pray with me. Five minutes a day, that's all I'm asking for. People don't want to pray. They don't pray. Well, you're not praying the Holy Ghost once in a while. You got to be praying in the spirit every day, even for a couple minutes. That's why we built the app every day, noon. I, I'm like a problem. I keep showing up, right? It's like, hey, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you, like pray with me five minutes a day, right? Five minutes of prayer. Let's go. I run around the building here, right? Video of myself. Come on, let's pray. Why? Because you're praying out mysteries. What did we tell you was hidden? The miraculous is hidden in the ridiculous. This don't make no sense. What is good sitting in a room going, He said, do it. Watch him show up. You feel this, brother? He confirms it. It doesn't make any sense. What am I doing? What am I doing? Praying on mysteries. How be in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. How be in the spirit, how be in the spirit. What mysteries are you leaving on the table because you ain't been praying? Mm. Come on. What mysteries has been hidden to you? I don't know how to build this church. Yeah, he does. Oh, I don't know how to change this family. He does. I don't know how to raise these kids. He does. I don't know how to get at this mess. He does. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I didn't know what I was doing. He rebuked me. He said, your problem is you need to know. God rebuked me. He said, you know what your problem is? I was like, okay. He said, you need understanding where I asked you just for obedience. I didn't ask you to understand me. I asked you to obey me. You don't need to know what you're doing. I told you it's good for you. How be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. When a man prays in unknown tongues, he speaks not unto men, but unto God. And he's praying on mysteries. Kingdom mysteries waiting for you. Your answers are waiting for you in the presence of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But here's the problem. We don't go in there because we're weak. Because yes, we're soulishly hurt. We take soul hits. Yes, sir. You don't want to go pray in no tongues when this is tough putting pressures on. You want to watch Netflix and eat Oreos. That's what we all want to do. I don't want to go in there. But I'm telling you what, I'm sharp. I'm sharp now, man. I got capacity to... Con- See, here's what happens. If you go to church and you communicate, church is full of communication. Communication is wonderful. I love communication. I ain't packing communication. I'm packing activation. All you got to do is agree with me. You'll have the strength to do it tomorrow. You didn't have today. Because I got it in me to give it away. Dangerous. Scaring myself. Not about me. But you got to get around somebody carrying something so they can give it to you. Once you get access to it by faith, you accept it. You'll have capacity to do it. That's transfer. You understand that? That's why you, that's why you, get, that's why you get on a plane and fly somewhere. And go somewhere. Because this ain't normal. If it was normal, you could have stood home. You see what I just said? Yes. You're going to have capacity to do what you could not do 20 minutes ago. Amen. Why is that? Because I'm carrying it. Amen. Carrying it. All you got to do is agree with it. You can get in on it. I can't do that. Yeah, you can. Come on. Yeah, you can. Because once you take a step, it'll be there waiting for you. Because God wants you there. Where does he want you? In the spirit. I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to pray for you guys. I, I think of you, and I flip the switch and code what I shake it, but I can't look my fucking on. That's why I like doing that thing, because I, I could see your name, I could associate, and I can catch it. Yes. You gotta, that's what you do with your kids. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's what you do with your family. Mm-hmm. That's what you do. You go in there. Mm-hmm. You got to pay the price spiritually. Pay the price. Well, I, 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 I don't know if I want to do it. Mm-hmm. Look what it says in Jude, Amplified Classic. Look at this. I'm done. One more scripture. Jude 120. Amplified classic I like. You guys can come sing in a minute. I got one more and that's it. You want to come up? You can come up. Go ahead. I won't keep you up there for four hours like I did those other people. Jude 120. <laughs> but you, beloved, build up yourself, your foundation on your most holy faith, making progress. Rise like an edifice, higher and higher, praying in the Holy Spirit. As I said, you want to have in, inward strength. You have to have inward capacity. Supernatural capacity to do. 
You know what I'm saying? Activation. Capacity. You got to get it. Get it from all. He's a quickening spirit. He'll quicken you. Pull you out of the rut. Shake you out of stuff. Break stuff off of you. Break limitation off of you. I'm telling you, you do it. I'm telling you, you got, hey, you want, you want to keep your coat on? Because you know what you've been doing? You keep your coat on for a while. You go through a soul hit. You take the thing off. You shove it in the closet. You ride it out for another four or five months. You get some goosebumps. You put your coat back on. You're not preparing and pressing each and every day for the destiny God gave you because life hits are hitting you and you don't have the strength to endure. A strong man's spirit could sustain him through bodily pain and trouble, but a weak spirit nobody can bear. What's that mean? My spirit's not strong enough to take the press, so instead of me pushing all the time, I go on the sideline and I come back in. And I get on the sideline and I come back in. And I go back and forth and come back in. Now God's like, nah, bump out of that. And you listen to your critics and you listen to some ding dong that left the church because they'd be mad in heaven. They're going to get to heaven and be mad in heaven. You should stop worrying about where people went, where people are doing, all this other nonsense. Love the people you got and press like you never pressed before for a prize that's waiting before you because if you don't press for that prize you're going to leave it behind and I ain't going to heaven like some punk without some rewards in my hand because you did something in the earth you got to go there well you know this is a little bit too extreme for me then heaven's going to really blow you out the kingdom of heaven suffers violence the violence taken by force so you, I'm, I feel it. I can feel it. Just I'm pulling it. You can get strong in this atmosphere because you've been getting weak. And most of you know what the weak is from? You're listening to people. Why in the heaven are you letting people speak in your life or, or, or taking the words of unqualified people and valuing them? Why? Don't do it. Ready for four? You got to hold on to the promise that God gave you to keep your coat on. You can't let go of these promises, man. They might, they take time. They take time, man. Well, I've been waiting for a year. Don't you let go. 20 years later, hold on to those promises. Don't let them go. Don't let that promise go. God gave it to you. He told you you're going to do it. You're going to do it. That's what people do, right? Now watch this. I'm going to show you something. Show you something, right? Write this down. I like this too. I got this. I got this in the passion. Hebrews 6.13. I told you I was going to talk to you tonight. And then I got another one for you. It's going to blow you up. Ready? You got this one? Hebrews 6.13. When God made promise to Abraham since there was no, no one greater than himself, he swore an oath in his integrity to keep his promise as sure as God exists. So he said, I have no doubt. I promise to bless you over and over and give you a son and multiply you without measure. So Abraham waited patiently in faith and succeeded in seeing the promise fulfilled. It's very common for people to swear an oath with something greater than themselves. The oath will confirm their statement and end all disputes. So in the same way, God had wanted to end all doubt and confirm it even more. Forcefully for those who inherit his promises. His purpose was unchangeable, so God added his vow to his promise. So it is impossible for God to lie. For we know that his promise and his vow will never change. And now we have run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find strength and comfort. For he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time, an unshakable hope. You need to look at 18 one more time, man. What? Look at the first part of that, please. So it is impossible for God to lie. Why do you question God's character? Because of your circumstances. Right? We all do, right? I'm questioning God's character because of my circumstances. If God's character was the question, no, my character is that question, not God's. Because God don't change. Now we have run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and comfort for he empowers us to seize what? What has already been established ahead of time an unshakable hope. I got news for you. God's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And he came right into your moment and put what you need right in front of you. All you got to do is walk in it. Don't stop walking forward. It's waiting for you. It's been there ahead of time. 
He knew before the world was framed what you needed and laid it up for you so you could find it. Look right here, though. Keep going, right? Watch. We have a certain hope, like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls. What? To God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat which sits in the heavenly realm and where Jesus is the forerunner who's gone before us. You can't question God. God's faithful. His hope is true. His promises are there. His plan is ready. Hold on to that promise. Don't let go. Don't make a difference what it looks like. Don't let go. Don't let go. Look at this scripture. Check this out. Go to Psalms. Passion's great. 105, 19. Before you pop it up there, I was in. I started thinking about Joseph, right? I said, man, look at all this stuff Joseph went through. Look at all this pain this guy went through. Look at all this stuff he went through. And then I sat there and I said, man, think of this. And I found this scripture. Look at this scripture. Check this out. God's promise to Joseph purged his character. until the time for his dream to come true. God's promise to Joseph purged his character. Two seconds before this guy is the most second most powerful man on the face of the earth, he has no idea. He's sitting in a pit thinking God forgot about him. Two seconds later, they remembered him again. And he becomes the second most powerful man in the world. But all the while, God was just purging his character until the promise was ready. Maybe God's purging your character to get you ready for the things he's got for you. It ain't comfortable, but maybe maybe he's just shaving a little bit of weakness off while you're waiting on that thing. Maybe you say, how about now? You know what? How about now? How about, watch this. How about, remember last season when the promise didn't look like it was happening and you were screaming and you were yelling. Some of you were cussing. Tell the truth. It's okay in the house of the Lord. Don't lie. And you were mad and you were upset. You were slinging snot. You were a little bit weird. You know what I'm saying? Remember that? You weren't too good. You weren't too hot. But now this year, you're like, God, I know it's taking a little time, but I'm okay. Remember when, remember when some of those people left the church and you're like mad and you crying for three days. Now you're only crying for an hour. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. Come on, I'm getting better. Remember when they cussed you out and you felt like knocking them out, but now you're halfway blessing them. You kind of like B and you walk away. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You seen it? Remember when they yelled at you and you thought you were gonna get mad and tell them all those words you learned when you were a little kid, but now you just go, no, I'm not gonna go there. You notice how maybe step by step, minute by minute, moment by moment, these promises that you're carrying are changing the way you're talking because I don't wanna talk my way out of something. I don't wanna leave something behind. I don't wanna leave nothing on the table. I don't want my emotions to rule me. I don't want none of this stuff to happen. So instead of me sitting there and what? Going off the rail, I'm getting a little bit better and holding on to these promises. You know, you know what? I got to the point, I said, God, you know what? You are the ultimate, you are the ultimate setup artist. Because what he does is this, he gives us the blessing and then goes, you want that promise? How bad? Bad enough to change your mouth? Bad enough to change how you think? See, the blessings of God make you transform. Because watch this. I'm mad, but I can't say nothing about it. I'm a little hurt, but I ain't going to say nothing about it. I'm upset, but I forgave you before you did it. Because if I hold on to unforgiveness, my prayers ain't going to be answered. So I ain't going to see my prayers. I'm not going in this thing and missing out. I got to get what I got to get. So I'm growing in character because I got a promise. The moment you let go of your promise, you're going to slip in your character. Pick those promises up again and hold on to them and let them be the governing of your life. Why? Because I'm going to bless them that curse me. I'm going to do good to them that despitefully use me. I'm going to take care of business. I'm not going to leave nothing on the table because I know that while I'm there, I ain't going to say that. I'm not allowed to say that. I won't say that. I refuse to say that. Let the weak say their 
not weak. Let them say they're strong. Come on, somebody. You're going to start changing your mouth. You're going to start changing your talk. You're going to start changing your thinking. You're going to start changing your miracle working ability. You're going to start changing supernatural activity. Because why? I'm getting, I'm going to let this promise purge me. I don't know about the pain, but I'm going to get through the other side because I'm going to allow the purging to take place. Come on, somebody. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't leaving nothing on the table. I ain't saying it. Say something. I ain't saying it. Press me on every way you want to press me. I ain't saying it. I ain't talking about it. I'm not bringing it up. And if they bring it up, right, I ain't got nothing to say about it. Why? Because I got to get my mouth. My mouth is steering my life. My mouth is steering my future. I'm not going to let that hurt me. I'm not going to let that hit me. I'm not going to let that affect me. I'm not going to let it. Why? I got a promise too big to let go. I'm hanging on to the promises of God. And I'm not going to change what I think. I'm not going to change what I say. I'm not going to change what I'm going to do. I'm going to do exceedingly in a Abundantly above all, I can ask her thing. Because if God be for me, nobody in the world could be against me. Come on, somebody.